Art life is a theory of creativity and consciousness that's the result of personal experience, doing different experiments with sectioning off time that I called art, and in that time living in a way that was artful. It's a new sense or a new concept of both art and studio and making and creativity. Seven years of living art is a performance lasting from 1984 to 1991 based on the seven chakras in the body. I dedicated it to my guru, Brahmananda Saraswati. I wore one color clothes each year, spent time in a colored space, listened to one pitch, talked in an accent each year, and once a month for the seven years, went to the new museum in New York City, where I read palms and did art life counseling and tarot. In Hindu philosophy, there's supposedly a snake at the base of the spine, coiled three and a half times, that when certain conditions are met, breathing, meditations, other kinds of disciplines, this snake rises slowly through the seven chakras and gives a release or a transformation or energy to each center, awakening it with serpent power. So this piece is based on succinctly and systematically allowing that to happen each year, going from one chakra to the next, to the next, to the next, and allowing the snake to slowly climb inside and to do its inner work in order to feel the geyser and the fountain of energy within. The red year was the beginning the sex center. In this experiment, I was imitating some of the disciplines and some of the environments that I had lived in as a Catholic nun, in a Buddhist monastery, a Zen Buddhist monastery, and a yoga ashram. I wanted to create a religion for myself. Red had an intensity that bordered on lunacy, the saturation, the repetition. I wore red everything, underpants, socks, winter coat in upstate New York, winter hat, gloves, bathing suit. I lived in a red space for three hours every day and listened to a sound on an oscillator for seven hours a day sound corresponding to the color red. Joan of Arc was my guide that year, and I talked in a French accent, went in public, and with everyone except my blood family. And one night, I had the red light on in the red room, the red sound going, and I heard a knock on the door. Somehow people had gotten through the front door. They thought it was a bordello. This was not uncommon for the sex year because the sex here attracted lots of sexual energy. The orange year, security. By the second year, I realized I wasn't a saint. I talked in the accent corresponding with the color. It was a non-accent, actually, because Teresa of Avila was my guide. But I didn't talk very much. I never left the house. I realized that I wasn't a saint, but I was becoming my own priest by forgiving myself for not listening to the sound seven hours a day, for not staying three hours in the room, etc. But I did want to be as much like Teresa of Avila as I could. Every year I did one drawing, only one. I limited myself. I thrived on limitation. 
I limited my color, the clothes I wore, what I listened to, where I went, how I spoke. And when I drew, the limitation brought an intensity to that drawing. I was so excited to do one drawing. And I wanted that passion, that excitement. So I only did one. The yellow year, courage. The piece very naturally corresponded with the shutdown of my ovaries. And by the end of the performance, I was definitely post-menopausal. My menstrual cycle started changing very, very little, but by the third year of the performance, I was noticing great changes. The piece was an intuitive, natural calendaring of my own inner cycle and of my own body manifesting old age. I didn't plan it that way, but that's how it surprised me and worked on me. My work always teaches me, my work always surprises me. I asked each chakra to open the year I was in the color, and green was the heart chakra. My mother died that year, my brother-in-law died that year, and my dog Betty, who was a performance dog, died that year. And my heart was shattered and opened and more than tested. My mother's death was a five-week hospital event that allowed me to be with her almost every day for that five weeks. We bonded and rebonded, and it was quite a privilege to be able to be with her in that time. The last day of her life, she went into a coma, and for 15 hours, she sang as many notes as there are human organs in the body, and it was the same sequence for 15 hours. Ah. something like that, over and over and over and over. I was in the room all night with her as she did this. Mom had been a professional singer in my father's band, and she went out with a song. So the blue year, the year of the throat, communication. Catherine Hepburn was my guide Growing up in a small town in upstate New York, there weren't many options for a young girl in the 50s. My grandmother from Italy used to hand me Mary Noel magazines, and there were nuns in this magazine. And I knew I was going to be a Mary Noel nun, because maybe then I could definitely be a saint and a martyr, be killed on a mission in Africa or South America or China. And this seemed like certainly a much more adventuresome and wonderful life than being a housewife. So I became a nun, and while in the convent, I found myself navigating toward painting, drawing, and a couple of times we put on small plays. When I left, the novice mistress, who walked like Catherine Hepburn and looked like Catherine Hepburn, only in a nun's outfit, came over to me and she said, Sister Rose, please, it's really right for you to leave. And when you do leave, become an actress. In the purple year, the intuition year, the location of the third eye and the pineal gland inside the head, for many reasons, many people would call it menopausal constriction of capillaries and veins in the brain, 
or from having used heavy-duty detergents and cleaners and floor sealers in the house that I was fixing, or from overworking or dietary reasons, for who knows what reason, or from stress. I was lying down one day and felt a very strong pain in the left side of my brain and knew something happened. And a year later, checked it out and found that I had had a small stroke. Each year of this performance, something corresponded in the body part that I was working on. I just watched all of these illnesses manifesting and clearing through as I gave attention to that center. In white, I came out of the process. In some cultures, the soul leaves from the top of the head. Specifically in Hindu cultures, the eldest son makes sure that the skull is broken in the fire, in the cremation fire, so that the top of the head is broken. There, the spirit or soul or Atman can leave. At birth, we're all born with a soft spot, and it's at that place that supposedly the soul leaves. And it's also the last chakra, the chakra that emits this energy or connects it to the sky. From 1991 to 1998, I'll be performing another seven years of living art. This time, I'm going down the chakras. I'll be appearing astrally and or physically at the Chagall Chapel four times a year, where I've donated myself as a living sculpture. I've also vowed not to write, publish, or photograph myself for these seven years, and I'm allowing life to discipline me. The purpose of another seven years of living art is nothing. <laughs> 